And because of your celebrity and your money, or maybe they, maybe him and a man who I understand they were like friends to some degree. Cause like I told you, I talked with a family member on the low, low and still had that interview. And when I asked if I could play it, I was told, no, they felt some kind of way about it. And I, I, don't, I don't betray those kind of, uh, I don't, be, I don't betray people's, um, uh, people's confidence. Okay. If you confide in me, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ever do that. Even if I think it might, you know, give us some clicks or whatever like that. Nah, it ain't worth it. G that ain't me. Sorry. Miller writes, uh, they kept so quiet about the drug operation. The wine wouldn't even answer questions about it. Good morning, by the way. That's Mila J. Good morning, Mila. Good to see you. Yes, they did. He didn't want to talk about that. He just wanted to focus on the fact that these children are going to be orphaned and what a tremendous traffic, tragic blow. What happened? I mean, was there some connection to the Mexican cartel? Something told me, and I'm going to tell you why, something told me that if it wasn't the Mexican tar- cartel, there was something else uh, so connected to it. And that was because Jeff Ruby, who initially put up, I think it was $25,000 for any information that would lead to the arrest of the culprits, of the of the suspects in that crime. Uh, about a week later, and maybe it wasn't even a week, he said, you know what? Me and my family got a good thing going on. And I don't want to complicate matters by, I don't know, making any elements out there in the world upset with me. Don't make me a target. So here's my question. Did someone from that world contact Mr. Jeff Ruby? Did he get contacted by law enforcement on any level saying, listen, it may not be smart to put yourself out there on a case like this. Was it his own family or just a bad vibe? But that was very interesting. Backed away and we've heard nothing else from Jeff Ruby. Like he said, you know what? Eh, it's just too much potential here for me to not live this fabulous life that it appears that I'm living right now. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I'm going to be good. So was there more to this story than meets the eye? Will we ever find out who killed these individuals? Okay. Is it just a coincidence that maybe they was running marijuana or whatever the hell they were doing up there? And then they also had this mass shooting. Was it personal? Was it business? Was it business? Will we ever know? We don't know. One thing we know about uh, our uh, attorney general here in the state is that DeWine doesn't give a damn about two things. Number one, what the black community thinks or the conscious and righteous community. He doesn't give a damn about what any of those communities thinks. Uh, He doesn't care about your opinion if you are in the black community, if you are in the conscious community, or, or if you are in a community where you believe in righteousness, he don't give a damn about with you. Now, righteousness and religiosity is two different things. I'm sure he cares very much about the, those who appear to be religious. But being righteous is something different. Uh, righteous people let their voice be heard when that brother was killed, hunted. Well, I take you what, set up really by Ronald Ritchie and his, his 911 phone call. Black man. Pointing guns at kids never happened. That should have been a damn lie right off the top. The reason why is because, it, and you, you tell me, if you're a police officer and you receive a phone call, I always use the same example. I'll go into it again. I hope I don't bore you. But if you receive a phone call saying that, you know, there's a man with a gun and he's not doing anything but we're just walking around with a gun, And we just feel a little uncomfortable. Can you come check it out? And there's a man who's waving and pointing a gun with people. Yeah, he don't, you know, as if he doesn't care. He pointed at a kid. Yeah, he's pointing at people. Don't you think that's a little bit different? I do. What is the situation where you got to be conscious because there's a gun involved? But let me go see. On the other, your decision, your opinion has already been shaped. He's pointing the gun at children which means that this man is a threat off the top. Ronald Ritchie is responsible on some levels for the death of that man, of that man. Very sad. Uh, Mr. John Crawford of that man, who was a father, 
who was a son. Very, very sad. Very, very sad. Ed writes, uh, a little while topic, LOL. Who pissed in uh, Trick Daddy's cornflakes? He's really upset. Just seen the video. Yeah, I saw that too. He was super upset. Uh, James writes, a friend told me AB's entourage jumped a woman down in uh, ATL. I don't know if it's true, but if it is, I hope AB didn't order it done. Really? Uh, Brittany writes, I'm late, but good morning, everyone. It's almost Friday. Miss D writes, Nate equals integrity. Absolutely. I am a man of my word, and I do not betray confidences. You will not believe the type of information that comes to your ear when you are doing a radio show that has, you know, any kind of visibility, okay, that has some kind of visibility. I'm talking about all kinds of stuff. And in a lot of cases, what you'll find out is that you know about things that are about to happen before they happen, things that potentially are big because people tell you they want you to know. And in some cases, you have to make decisions, right, in the moment. Why the cameras are rolling, why the microphone is hot about how you are going to deal and how you're going to tackle, you know, these particular issues. Huge. Um, Let's see what else here. Uh, Well, listen, thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate you. I really, 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 really do. While the beginning of the show was my favorite part of the show, the ending of the show is my least favorite part. I love being with you every single morning. I feel like we are growing something together. I mean, yeah, it's my show. Okay, my name's on it. Yeah, I know all of that. However, and I'll say it again, if this is going to be successful, if this project is going to be successful, if this dream is become is going to become a reality, it will be because of you. And that's why I thank you so much. So thank you again. Have a great Thursday. Make it a powerful Thursday. Go out there and conquer the world, man. Step outside your comfort zone. Okay, lift your fist in the face of the status quo for somebody who can't do it. And I'll be back in deafer than ever tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Tomorrow's Friday, so our Gilligan of the Week. And also some updates on things for the new studio and the project as well. Also, I'll cover all everything that's going on locally, nationally. If people are talking about it, if people should be talking about it, we'll be talking about it first here in the city of Cincinnati on the Nathan Ivy Show. Again, shout out to my good friends over at soulpublicradio.com. Find the link on my site. And if you know someone who has a small business, and they'd like to advertise that business in front of a, a dedicated audience, let them know about the Nathan Ivey Show. And they can contact me via my website, NathanIvey.com. Until tomorrow, I'm out.